Hello everyone, hope you are all doing good. Now in this video we are going to discuss about antenatal care. Okay? First we will see about duration of pregnancy. So this can be taken as 10 lunar months or 9 calendar months and 7 days. And in other words, it is around 280 days or 40 weeks. Okay. Now remember, we have already seen that we have something called as gestational age and embryonic or in other words, we can tell it as a fertilization age also. Okay. So, gestational age is how the obstetricians denote the duration of pregnancy and in the embryonic age is uh, how the embryologists used to denote the duration of pregnancy. Okay? Now, if we see this, the gestational age is calculated from the date of LMP, okay? which is 2 weeks more than the embryonic or fertilization age. Okay? And in fertilization age, uh, it is calculated from the date of fertilization only. Okay. So, if we see this is 2 weeks or 14 days more. Okay. G gestational age. So, in other words, if 280 days is the days if we calculate from the date of LMP. In other words, the embryonic or fetal age can also be taken as 266 days. Understood? Yes. Now, with this understanding, we will go on to the, now, we will see some important definitions in obstetrics. First definition is, who is a gravida? See, gravida is a female who is pregnant. Okay, who is pregnant. So, can you tell me who is a nulli gravida? Null means no. So, literally that means no pregnancy. That means a female who has never been pregnant. Okay, and also what is a primi gravida? Primi means prime. Prime means first. So, it is the first time pregnancy. So, she is pregnant for the first time. Okay. Next. What is multi gravida then? So, she is pregnant multiple times. Okay. Who is pregnant for multiple times or pregnant for more than once? Okay. That will exclude primary gravida. Okay. So, another important definition what you have to know is what is a or who is a para? Okay. Para means she has delivered a baby after 24 weeks. Okay? And remember, in multiple pregnancies, okay, this is counted as a single birth. Okay? We will be counting the Pregnancies, okay, not the number of fetuses, okay. Now, multiple pregnancy means we are telling about the fetuses, 
but in para we are talking about the birth only okay so it is a counted as a single birth okay and next is so the same way what is nulli para then never carried a pregnancy after 24 weeks yes similarly what is a prime para she has carried more than 24 weeks of pregnancy sorry repeat she has carried pregnancy for more than 24 weeks only once okay and similarly what is a who is a multi repeat and similarly who is a multi para so more than once she has carried her pregnancy above 24 weeks okay and in this area i am i want to just make you clear that there is a term called grand multi para okay you can use the term grand multi para only she has carried pregnancies at least five pregnancies more than 24 weeks of gestational age understood so you are never going to use the grand multi para term when she is she has given birth thrice or four times and all okay it should be exceeding five births or when the pregnancies have crossed more than 24 weeks of gestation five weeks at least sorry five times at least okay now whom you called as a elderly gravida this definition is also given when the age of the female is more than 35 years right okay now i just want to make clear at this point about viability okay so what is viability means it is the ability of the fetus to survive outside the uterus okay now this period differs according to the country for example in india it is considered after 24 weeks okay in us okay viability can be considered after 20 weeks okay whereas in uk and europe that is considered after 24 weeks okay now we'll see about the estimated date of delivery that is cdd how we are going to calculate okay remember even when you are calculating edd and all only 5% women are going to deliver on the date of edd okay are going to deliver on the estimated date of delivery okay so we have a rule to calculate edd yes that is called as neglis rule okay so very important neglis rule okay so what we'll be doing is we'll be asking the lmp of the patient what we'll be doing is we'll be asking the lmp of the patient and to the lmp we are going to add 9 months and 7 days simple right 
So, for example, we'll see an example. Okay, suppose if the LMP of the woman is third May. Okay, now to this we are going to add nine months and seven days. Okay, so to this date we are adding nine months and seven days. So that means it is May. Okay, we can do it as June, July, August, September, October, November. December, January and February, right? And also, so the month comes around Feb and remember, it is 2024 Feb, okay? Changing the year is also important. And also, you have to add 7 days to the date, okay? So, it will be 10 Feb 2024, okay? So, that is our expected date of delivery. Understood? So, in some times, sometimes because or months or like 31 days, 30 days like that, sometimes if when you are confused even you can calculate the date first, okay, you can calculate the date first, then you can go on for the month, okay, to reduce the confusion. And also, there are some rules in calculating this uh, EDT by Needless rule, okay. What we are going to consider is, importantly, the rules of Nigli's rule is, number one, she should have a regular menstrual cycle and the duration of the cycle should be around 28 days and it should be the gestational age whenever you are documenting. Okay, whenever you are documenting by calculating this EDD, it should be documented in weeks. Understood? So, suppose I say uh, the woman is having a menstrual cycle of say 40 days. She has cycle once in 40 days only. Now, how you will calculate EDD? The same thing, you are going to calculate your EDD using your Negley's rule, okay. Now, subtract your 28 days from this 40, you are getting 12 days, right. So, to the EDD, you are going to add these 12 days again, understood. So, for example, say this EDD, take this EDD itself, okay. So, the cycle of this woman she says she gets cycle only in 40 days. Now, I have extra 12 days. This extra 12 days, I will add it up to the EDD. That's all. Okay. Same way, same way, suppose the woman says she gets her cycle every 25 days. Okay. So, that means 3 days less. So, what you are going to do? 28 and 25. Right. So, 3 days. So, this 3 days, you will subtract it from the expected date of delivery, okay. So, if it is a longer cycle, add the number of days. If it is a shorter cycle, subtract the number of days, okay. So, that is the thing, okay. So, once again, I will make it clear. More than 28 days means add the number of days. Less than 28 days, that is she is having shorter cycle means reduce the number of days from the calculated EDD. Understood? Anyhow, you are going to apply your Negley's rule and calculate the EDD. Right? Clear? Okay. Now, this is when she is having a regular menstrual cycle and she has conceived naturally and all. Suppose I tell, okay, the woman has conceived by ART, okay, artificial reproductive technique and I did embryo transfer on her day of fertilization okay now we have another scenario like the woman had conceived via artificial reproductive techniques and i say i did embryo transfer on her day of fertilization itself okay on her day of 
fertilization. Okay. Now, I have already explained you clearly that in embryonic age or fertilization age, we are going to subtract the 2 weeks that is 14 days from the normal period of pregnancy. So, in days, the normal duration of pregnancy is 280 days. In embryonic age, it is going to be 2 weeks less or 14 days less. So, it is going to be 266 days. Okay, so this number only we are going to take it here. So, I say I did embryo transfer on the day of fertilization. That means 